On March 29, 2017, my life changed forever. I remember going to work that morning and sitting through roll call. I was then dispatched on a burglary in progress call at 0958 a.m. Nothing prepares you for the day that your life changes forever. March 29th started out as a normal Wednesday. I responded along with several other officers. I could hear the suspects. I went to the back of the house and could hear the suspects inside the house. I advised dispatch and the other officers that we had them contained to the house. They then went to the garage area, took one of the victim's cars and smashed through the garage door. An ensuing shootout occurred and I was struck in the head by a ricochet from one of the bullets. There were two police officers in the office and there had been an accident. I was then transported to Center Point Hospital where they had to pre perform emergency surgery on me. The bullet was lodged in my brain and the surgeon decided to leave it there. So I still have the bullet in my head. We met with the doctor and the surgeons um, and the news was not really promising. They kept me in an induced coma for the duration of my stay at Center Point to allow my brain to begin healing. The doctors told us to plan for the inevitable, but I kept thinking, you don't know my Tom. You don't know his will to survive. You just don't know him. People always ask me what it's like to have a brain injury. And I explained it to them. The easiest way to explain it to someone is to go through the stages of life. People have their whole lives to learn how to be an adult. I went from being an adult to an infant in a matter of a second. I had to relearn how to do everything all over again, just like an infant. I had to learn how to brush my teeth. I had to learn how to regain my balance, just to sit up. How to move my limbs, everything. Watching him learn how to do things over again was really hard. The first time he put a shirt on by himself, it took him over five minutes to do that. I stood by with my hands clasped behind my back to keep myself from helping him. After being discharged from Center Point Hospital, I was transferred to an inpatient rehabilitation facility in Lincoln, Nebraska. I started to work on such basic things, basic things such as being able to sit on my own. When I initially got there, it took three to four of the therapists just to help me sit. Initially when I got there, when I would talk, it would be in a whisper. I thought that I was talking in a normal conversational tone, and it took someone to record me to realize, for me to realize I was actually whispering. Stop. Under arrest. Don't move. Turn around the train's on your back. My family and friends came up to visit me a lot, which was very important to me. It gave me encouragement to go on. It gave me something to fight for. And that became my main focus, is to get back home. After discharging from Madonna in Lincoln, Nebraska, I was then transferred to Omaha, Nebraska, to Quality Living Incorporated, QLI. Madonna was more of a hospital setting. QLI was more of a real life setting. At QLI, since it's more of a real life setting, they're teaching me how to be more independent in my daily life such as doing laundry and learning how to cook all over again. The technology here at QLI was amazing. I got to use such things as something called the Zero G, which is a harness they strap on, and it takes weight off of you, and it helps you learn how to walk. And then I also got to use something called the Exoskeleton. It helped me strengthen my legs and build up my endurance. Initially, my goal was to get back to work, but as time progressed and I progressed through my rehabilitation process, that became less and less important to me. And more important was just getting back home and being a, being a family man again, being a father to my children and a husband to my wife. So that's my focus. My family is very overjoyed that I'm able to come home and have progressed as far as I have. And as far as I've progressed, I still have a long way to go. But every day he still continues to make progress and continues to get better. And who knows where we'll be two years, five years, ten years down the road.
My injury changed my perspective on life. I now am much more thankful for everything that I'm given. Just being able to talk and walk and move, things that normal people take for granted, I'm very thankful for and will always be thankful for. It's just a different perspective knowing that I almost could have died. This whole incident has completely changed my outlook on life. I've always been a positive person, um, but the little things just don't matter anymore. It's just a little thing. All I have to do is think about the last eight months and the fact that I almost lost the love of my life in the blink of an eye, that nothing else matters. With him and his injury, he's always pushed through things and He's in a wheelchair now, pushing himself through all these obstacles and working hard, hard every day. And he's just doing really well. I'm just ever so grateful that he is such a strong fighter. He's our Superman. Home to me means being with my family again. It's been almost eight months since I've been able to be at home with my family. And it's very important to me to get back to them, to be a part of their lives, to be a part of my children's lives, to be a part of my wife's life, just to be a part of everyday living again. Coming home will be the best thing, will be the best thing ever.